geometry of coordinates or maybe we can say that coordinate geometry is geometry in a coordinate plane right like we have been studying geometry since our school days where we were like calculating different things on some geometrical figure like circle or triangle or a parallelogram or a square or rectangle things like that the only difference the only way coordinate geometry is different from the normal geometry is that we have been given we are given something some information related to the coordinates of of that that figure of that figure so for example if we have a circle then the coordinates of the center might be given if we have a square then one or more of the vertices their coordinates might be given things like that right <clears throat> rene you got disconnected hello hello pranay can you hear me yes sir sorry sir wo galti se li ho gayi okay so basically what is a coordinate plane that's the fundamental question so something like this 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 is our y axis this is our x axis and this is our coordinate plane so this quadrant is called first quadrant this is second quadrant this is third quadrant this is fourth quadrant so we are basically going in anti clockwise direction right mm. <clears throat> so let's say we have a point here something like this and let's say the coordinates of this points are of this point are x and y then what does what do x and y mean tell me coordinate x sorry x matlab plane x y plane bolte hain coordinates of point let's say let's call this point p the coordinates x y of this point p mean something what is the meaning the x coordinate is the distance from the y axis so this distance is equal to x <clears throat> similarly this distance is equal to y right and since it's a rectangle this side is also equal to y and this side is also equal to make sense yes okay yes. so that is about the coordinates of a point another interesting point here is in the first coordinate both x and y coordinates are positive right in the yes. second quadrant the x coordinate is negative but the y coordinate is positive why because anything above the x axis is positive on the y axis like any point which is above x axis would have a positive y coordinate because it simply because it lies above the x axis so x axis like this point is 0 0 this is also known as origin this point is 0 0 if any point is lying above the x axis let's say here of course the y coordinate is going to be greater than 0 right hence it is positive any point that lies above x axis has a positive y coordinate and any point that lies below x axis has a negative y coordinate i guess this should be clear to you guys or you guys might have already known that right mm -hmm. yes or no yes rane yes sir or is it too basic to be told or asked whether you know that nahi 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 sir okay <clears throat> so in the first quadrant what happens is any point that lies in the first quadrant is on the right side of y axis which makes its x coordinate positive and it lies above the x axis and that makes its y coordinate positive so both the coordinates of any point in first quadrant Uh, are positive 
similarly in the second quadrant since the point lies on the left side of the y axis that's why its x x x coordinate is negative while the y coordinate okay. is positive because the point still lies above the x axis right in the third quadrant the point lies on the left side of the y axis and that's why its x coordinate is negative as well as it lies below x axis that's why its y coordinate is also negative am i making sense mm. in the fourth quadrant <clears throat> the x coordinate is positive because the point lies on the right side of y axis right but since it lies below x axis the y coordinate is nahi sir ulta bata diya gaya nahi sahi sorry 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 clear ha ah. okay uh another thing let's take a look at uh, another point let's say another point q and let's say its coordinates are um, p and q or m and n let's say then we can find the distance between these two points pq although they might look like this line might look parallel to the x axis but actually it is not okay so what is the distance between these two points pq can you tell me yes come on this is a very basic formula so root of yeah. Minus x n का whole square plus y two minus y right so root of x minus oh, just a moment I'm getting a call sorry I'm back <clears throat> so x coordinate of one point minus x coordinate of another point whole of square plus y coordinate of one point minus y coordinate of another point again square this is the distance between these two points or we can take x and y coordinates of these two points whatever we like x1 x2 y1 y2 or anything okay, okay. am i making myself clear yes okay so this is about points now let's take a look at the lines in a coordinate plane so can i erase this so this is our x and y axis let's say this is a line let's call it l okay this is the slope of the line let's say this is theta then what do what is the slope of the line l slope of line l is equal to what this angle is theta then what is the slope of line l can you guys hear me hello yes yes i equal to mx plus c hota hai basically to no i am just talking about the slope what is the slope of this line okay then ek second ah sir by minus x upon come on i have given you the this angle theta ha to sir ye theta hi is the slope come on slope is not theta slope is equal to tangent of theta and theta correct 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 bhul gaya tha okay hmm another way of calculating the slope is yes what is another way y equal to mx plus c होता है और c is कोई point होता है y minus c upon x हम्म नेहा जी what about you नहीं है पर यार okay another way of calculating the slope of this line we can choose any two points on this line okay now This line is parallel to y-axis. Therefore, this angle would also be theta. Right. 
Now let's say the coordinates of these points are x1, y1, and this point are x2, y2, x2. right? Then how do we calculate 10 theta? 10 theta wow. is height divided by base, right? We yeah. know that from yeah. geometry, 10 theta is equal to height divided by base. What is yeah. the height here? Height here would be equal to y2 minus y1, right? Mm -hmm. And what would be the base here? Base here would be equal to x2 minus x1. So 10 theta or slope would be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Make sense? That is the slope of this equation. Now, slope of this line. Now, <clears throat> what you were you have been saying all along, y is equal to mx plus c. That is basically the way to represent a straight line in a coordinate plane. Uh, m is slope, basically. In this equation, this is the slope. And what is this? The what? C. What is C? C is uh, the constant. I mean, this line is very... C is called intercept. What is intercept? Intercept, like wherever the line... Uh, I mean, intersects the y-axis. Y-axis. Whatever that distance is, that is c. So in this case, c is negative, right? Correct. Because the line is intersecting the y-axis on the negative side of the y. Okay. So this is the fundamental equation of a of a straight line in a coordinate plane. You can say so. Okay. Now. Since here M represents slope and we know that for any straight line in a coordinate plane, we can calculate the slope as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 as well. So we can substitute the value of this M in this equation. Right? Or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Actually, we cannot right away substitute this value. We have to make some changes as well. And those changes, like, those are like minor changes, but beyond the scope of DMAT. So let's just take a look at the final equation. The, another way of writing the equation of a line in the coordinate plane is equal to y minus y1 is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 into x minus. Basically, we can see that this is our slope. And of course, this is y part and the x part. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. So these are the two ways of representing a straight line uh, in a coordinate plane. Hmm. What else? Uh, hey, uh, do ये वाला इक्वेशन आया है y minus y1 वाला ये m is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 पुट करने का आया है yes yes देखिए स्लोप इज स्टिल सेम ओनली थिंग इज इफ वी जस्ट सिंपलीफाई दिस इक्वेशन द c वुड कम आउट टू बी सम एक्सप्रेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ x2 minus x1 और x1 और समथिंग लाइक दैट x2 x1 लाइक दैट सम एक्सप्रेशन we don't need to go there. We don't need that from the UMAX perspective. Even I, I don't think like even from the coordinate geometry perspective that we might have studied during engineering entrance, we need that. Is this clear? This is very basic stuff, but I hope everything is clear till now. Right? Pranay? Mm -hmm. Is it too boring to induce sleep? No, 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 sir. Boring, no. Okay. So now let's jump to our exercise. Let's see. We need to learn a few more stuff that we would learn during our exercise itself. Okay.
Question number one. What is the area of the square with the following coordinates? X, Y, 20, 20, 25, X, 5. Yes. B. But how to find that? That's the question. So coordinates say sides value. Coordinates say sides length nikali. Okay. But how do you know which sides are related to which side? Like you might be taking these two points. But these two might be the opposite ends of a diagonal. So if you are calculating the distance between these two points, basically you are calculating the length of a diagonal rather than side. So how do you decide? Okay, let me show you. This is y axis, this is x axis. Okay, what are the coordinates of four points given to us? X, Y, and if we look at another point with X coordinate equal to X, X, Y. Now, since this is a square and this line is supposed to be parallel to the Y axis, forgive me for... Diagonals to win is Sorry? Diagonals to win is I'm just giving an example. Maybe you chose like the coordinates of this point and this point and you are trying to find the distance between them. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Uh -huh. So this line is supposed to be parallel to Y axis. Now, of course, these two points would have the same distance from Y axis. And that's why they would have the same X coordinate, right? Mm -hmm. So if this point is x, y, then this point is supposed to be x, y. Yes. Mm. Similarly, if this point is 20, 20, then this point is supposed to be 20 and 5. 25. Right. So what we need to do now, we just need to find the length of one side since it's a square. So we don't need to find length of another side. So length of one side since x coordinates are equal in this case, the length would simply be 15, right? Okay. Yeah. And so the area would be equal to what? Side square. Mm -hmm. And that is equal to 15 square is equal to 225. Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Sir, we say log uh in uh, sequentially length change kar sakte ka points. See, I've just drawn an example figure just to give some clarity in the visual form. Okay. I mean, they can change. But if you go by this logic, that X coordinates of two points, like these two points would be same. Okay. X coordinates of these two points would be same. You would never be confused. Like whichever way they give you. Doesn't matter. Hmm. Right? They can do whatever. Like they have the freedom to do whatever they want to do. And they might do it actually just to confuse. <clears throat> Although I've never come across such a scenario, but they can do. Like, why not? What's wrong with that? In a rectangular coordinate system, what is the area of a rectangle whose vertices have the coordinates minus 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 3, and minus 4, minus 3? Yes. B. B. So now we can see that first two points have the same y coordinate, right? That means they are at same distance from x axis. That means they are forming, they are the two coordinates of this side, right? Hmm. Similarly, second and third point have the same x coordinate. That means they are the vertices of this side. So this would be like this and so on like this. What is the length of this side? Four. And Four. what is the length of this side? Five. Six. Five. Minus three minus three is uh -huh. minus four minus one would be five. So what would be the area of the rectangle? Twenty. Mm -hmm. Easy? Yes. Okay. Third question. A is a point with 
coordinates phi and w q is the x y oh, sorry a phi w q is the x y coordinate of point located on the parabola this. Just to remind you guys, a parabola is a figure something like this, right? Hmm. Parabola x square plus two. What is the value of w? What is the value of w? So if a. this point x y, this point a lies on this parabola, y is equal to x square plus two, then the coordinates of a should satisfy this equation, hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Let's just substitute the values of coordinates of A. So W Q is equal to X square, which would be 5 square plus 2. Right. Yeah. Which is equal to 27. 27. So if W Q is equal to 27, that means three. W is equal to 3. Simple? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the next time. I have a little bit of a graph. I have a little bit of a graph. See, most questions on GMAT, they might look complex, but fundamentally or conceptually, they are simple. Mm. Most questions, I'm not saying all. Some, the most tricky ones are basically they might look simple, but they might be very tricky. Okay. <clears throat> For all numbers x and y, the operation this is defined by x hash y is equal to x plus y cube. Where is the operation? What is this called? Tilde? Yes. It is defined by x tilde y is equal to x minus y cube. At which of the following points in the x y plane is the value of x hash y equal to the value of x tilde y? This is very simple, right? Mm. You're supposed to... <clears throat> Uh, find the value, uh, find the x and y coordinates where these two values are equal. Simply we can do is x plus uh, equal to x. Right? Let's just expand them. X I said option y cube. Do do I Sorry? Expand, expand, expand. You just substituted the values of the answers, right? Yeah. Okay, I understand. value put right so what are we left with here we would have we would have 3 x y uh, uh, sorry 3 x, x y, 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 y as well in positive so 3 x y square we will cancel out mm -hmm. here and here. what we have would be left with 2 y cube plus mm -hmm. 6 x square Y. y is equal to zero. Let's take two y common. Mm -hmm. Y square plus three x square is equal to zero. Y ki value zero hogi. Ya to. Yeah, if either y is equal to zero or y is equal to some square root of negative quantity, which is not possible. So the only possible value of y from here would be y is equal to zero. Am I making sense? Mm. Okay. Actually, out of these options, only one uh, uh, option has y is equal to 0. Although we should still continue our calculation. So, if we keep y is equal to 0, then what is the value of x? Yes. Actually, it does not matter. Y is equal to zero. You can have whatever value of x. These two would always be equal. Mm, correct. Am I making sense? Because yes. both of them would reduce to x cube, x cube. Mm. So the only condition is y should be equal to zero. Of course, the answer is. Three. Am I making sense, Neha ji? Yes. Are you sure? Why it does yes. not matter what the value of x is? Yes. Because we can subtract 0 from x or we can add 0 to x. Both ways, the final value, value will, will be x. Yes, or x cube. Right. Cool. Okay. 
Okay. What is the area of triangle ABC in the preceding figure? So, how do we calculate the area of a triangle? Half H into B by 2. Yes. Half into base into height. Right? Mm -hmm. What is the base here? Base is AB. What is the length of AB? Length of AB is, since Y coordinates are same, so minus four, 2, four. Minus two, which is 4. Similarly, what is the height of the triangle, which is BC? Since X coordinates are same, so 3 minus minus 3. So 6. The triangle area of triangle would be half into 4 into 6, which is equal to 12. 12. Clear? Hmm. Yes. Okay. In the diagram ever, if lines L1 and L2 are parallel, what is the value of X? Hmm. One is enough. Agar uh, parallel hai to x equals to y over. Nay. One eighty minus one. Sir, x x wo wala angle x ye wala angle. This is x. Okay. One. Ha, yeah. Answer. Ha. A a. Matlab one hi enough hai. Exactly. See, from geometry, we know that these two angles are called corresponding angles. They are equal, right? Yes. So this would be equal to Y as well. Mm. Right? If we know Y, then this total angle, which is 180 degree, 180 so X plus Y would be equal to 180 degree. And if we know Y, we can simply calculate X is equal to 180 minus X. Simple? Mm. So, from the options given, this is providing us enough information to calculate x, but this is not providing any information to calculate the exact value of x. Make sense? Hmm. So the answer should be this. Hmm. Next. In the xy plane, is the point 4 minus 2 on the line L? Okay, so in the xy plane, this is y, this is x. <clears throat> we have been given any equation L. And what is the information given? That point 1, 1 is on the line L. Let's say this is point 1, 1. And another information that is given is the equation x is equal to 2 minus y describes the line. So basically, we have been given the equation of the line. What is the question? Is this point, is the point 4 minus 2 lie on the line? This yeah. point should verify the equation. Exactly. If this point lies on this line, then the coordinates of this point should satisfy the equation of this line. So let's try to substitute the value. So minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 4. This implies minus 2 is equal to minus 2. That means this point lies on this line. Either way, we can check whether a point lies on a line or not just by substituting the value of values of coordinates of that point into the equation of that line. So equation like this, information two alone is enough. One is not providing us any meaningful information from the question's perspective, right? So the answer should be what? B. If JK is not equal to zero and JK lies in the XY coordinate system, in which quadrant does JK lie? Okay. So first of all, JK is not equal to zero. That means none of them is zero. Right? Yes. And JK lies in the XY coordinate system. In which quadrant does JK lie? First piece of information says, JK is less than zero. That means they have opposite sign. Make sense? Yes. That means they could be lying either here or, or four. Oh, sorry. Four. four. Second or four. Second information says J plus K is equal to zero. Mm, J plus K is equal to, oh, sorry, greater than, greater than zero. 
is it any meaningful piece of information is it possible to have this kind of condition in either of these two quadrants let's try so when the point is in second quadrant let's say the point is minus 2 and 3 right so j plus k is greater than j plus k would be equal to 1 which is greater than 0 or we can have the point 3 comma minus exactly 3 comma minus 2 again j plus k is 1 which is greater than 0 so this is not providing us any meaningful information this is helping us drilling down to two quadrants either second or four but beyond that we cannot go which quadrant right we cannot specifically find out which quadrant the point lies in so both so are not are not enough and that's why the answer would be make sense hmm okay AB is perpendicular to CO. Is A or B closer to C? So AB is given perpendicular to CO. That means all these angles are right angles, ninety degree. What is the in what other information do we have? OA is less than OB. So basically, this distance is less than this distance. That simply means that A is closer to point o than b is right mm. yes now since this distance is same for these both these points a and b of course whichever point has smaller distance this would be closer to c right correct because the distance between these two points would be like hypotenuse of this right angle triangle right mm. yes so first provides enough information that a is closer let's look at the second piece of information abcd is not a parallelogram that is not providing us any meaningful information so the answer should be a make sense hmm yes okay let's move ahead Lines M and N intersect as shown in the figure above. What is the value of U minus W? U is given to be ninety degree. That means this is a right angle triangle. Uh, right angle. Uh, this is a right angle. If this is right angle, this would also be a right angle, yes. right? So U would be equal to ninety, and W would also be equal to ninety. That means U minus W would be equal to zero. So this piece of information is enough to calculate u minus w let's look at second piece of information lines m and n are perpendicular so if lines m and n are perpendicular that means each of these angles are again equal to 90 degree so again we would have u minus w would be equal to 0 so this is also enough so the answer should be d yeah ji any doubt yes no what is the doubt नहीं नहीं डाउट नहीं ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन इन द एक्स वाई कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम इफ एम एन एंड एम प्लस टू एन प्लस के आर टू पॉइंट्स ऑन द लाइन विद द इक्वेशन एक्स इज इक्वल टू टू वाई प्लस फाइव देन के इज इक्वल टू वॉट सिंपल If these two points lie on the lie on this equation, then their coordinates should satisfy the equation of the line, right? Yes. So let's look at the first point. So m is equal to two n plus five. That should be the first case from this point, right? Mm -hmm. Let's try substituting the coordinates of the second point. So two n plus k plus five. Now what we can do is we can substitute the value of m from this equation to here. So two n plus five 
प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू टू एन प्लस टू के प्लस फाइव फाइव टू एन टू एन कैंसल विथ फाइव फाइव वी कैन सब्रैक्ट वॉट वी आर लेफ्ट इज टू के इज इक्वल टू टू दिस इक्वल टू के इज इक्वल टू वन दैट शुड बी द आंसर सिंपल नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन The line shown passes through the point A thirty. Which of the following is closest to the value of A? C. Nothing has been given in this uh, figure much, but still we have enough information to find the equation of this line. How do we find the equation of this line? Mm -hmm. Slope is equal to m is equal to ten theta is equal to what? Height divided by base, right? What is base two? So that is the slope of the line. Plus, we know the intercept of this line is what one. Mm. So from y is equal to m x plus c, we can find that the equation of the line is y is equal to one by two x plus one. Right. Mm. Now, if this point a thirty lies on this line, then a thirty should satisfy the equation of this line. So thirty is equal to one by two a. Plus one, makes sense. This implies twenty nine is equal to a by two. This implies a is equal to fifty eight. That should be the answer. Okay. Clear? Yes. Yeah, ji. All well. Hi. Okay. Thirteen. P x y is the intersection point between the circle x square plus y square is equal to four and the line y is equal to x plus two. Which of the following can be the point P? Okay. Line's value circle में substitute कर दीजिए. Exactly. What the question is saying, there is a circle and there is a line. We don't know whether this line is intersecting this circle at two points or one point. a line can intersect a circle in only two ways right either this way or this way right here we have only one point of intersection here we have two points of intersection we don't know what is the case but whatever is the case wherever these two uh, things like circle and line are intersecting the the their the basically equation should yield the same value so if we substitute This y is equal to x plus two from the equation of this line into this circle, then that should be satisfied, right? So y is equal to x plus two. Let's substitute that in the equation of the circle. Am I making sense? Huh. X square plus x square plus four x plus four is equal to four. 2x square plus 4x is equal to zero. Okay, let's take 2x common. So x plus 2 is equal to zero. This implies x is equal to zero or x is equal to minus 2. Yes. Hmm. And this implies y is equal to what? If x is equal to zero, then y would be equal to 2. Or x is equal to 2. Sorry, uh, here x is equal to minus two, not two. Mm. X plus two is equal to zero. Yields x is equal to minus two. So y is equal to zero. So what the possible points would be? Zero, two, or minus two, zero. Okay. What is the options we have? So this should be the well. This should be the right answer because in option C, we need a positive. Plus two, but here we have negative. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, ji, all clear? Yes. Yes. Fourteen. In the figure above, if Q R is equal to four and P Q is equal to three, then the x y coordinates of point P are basically Q R distance Q R is four. So if this distance is four, suppose the x coordinate of Q would be equal to the x coordinate of R, which is one, right? We saw that before as well. 
and what would be the y coordinate since this distance is 4 and this x y coordinate is minus 1 so the y coordinate of q would be 3 3 make sense pranay uh -huh. okay here in case of p the y coordinate of p would be equal to the y coordinate of q so 3 right now we have been given that this distance pq is equal to 3 and this point, uh, this point Q has a X coordinate one. So basically what would be the X coordinate of point P minus two, Correct. right? So that should be the answer. So minus two and three. Let's move ahead. Fifteen. What is the sum of the areas of shaded rectangular regions shown in the figure above? This is very simple. So this shaded region is consisting of two parts. This is first part, this is second part. Let's calculate their area separately and then we will sum them up. So this is a rectangle and the width is how much? Width is 0.5 because 0.5 to one is 0.5, right? How much is the height? Height is how much? 1 minus 0.25, which is equal to 0.75. Yes. So the area of this rectangle first would be equal to 0.75 into 0.5, which would be equal to 0.375. Similarly, area of the rectangle 2 would be how much? What is this length? 2.5 minus 0.5. And this width is 0.25. 0 0.25. This is also equal to 0.375. If we add these two, the area of the shaded region, region would be what? 0.75. Mm -hmm. That should be the answer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sixteen. <clears throat> in the figure above, triangle ABC lies in the coordinate plane, not pictured. What is the slope of line segment AC? <clears throat> so we have to find the slope of this line segment AC. What we have been given information one says the slope of line segment BC is minus five. So BC is minus five. Okay. Slope is equal to minus five. Information two says the slope of line segment BA is minus one. Uh, sorry, 1.1. 1 .1. Now, we don't know how to calculate the slope from BC, slope of AC from BC, but we know that there is a thing, something like if there are two perpendicular lines, let's say L and M, and their slopes are, let's say, M1 and M2, then M1 into M2 is equal to M1, right? Mm. That means, and here we know that this angle is 90 degree. So AB and AC are perpendicular. So that means slope of AB and slope of AC multiplied B equal to minus one. That means slope of AC should be equal to minus one divided by 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1. So information one is not enough to find the answer, but information two is it. So answer should be? B. Neaji, make sense? Yes. Did you know this? No. You don't remember. So you should write it down then. The only condition is these two lines should be perpendicular to each other. Okay. The reverse is also true. If the slope multiplication of slopes of two lines is equal to minus one, that means these two lines are perpendicular. Okay. Can we move ahead? Yes, sir. Okay. 17. Point PQ is in the coordinate plane. Is P greater than Q? Okay. What is the information given in one? P is positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. It's not providing us any meaningful at the point. This point. Second says point PQ above on the line, above off the line. It should be above off the line. Y is equal to X plus 1. 
So if PQ is above the line, Y is equal to X plus one, what should be the case? C plus one, Matlab, Q is greater than C. C. If, let's say this is a coordinate plane and Y is equal to X plus one would be something like this. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Let's suppose for a moment this PQ lies on this line, y is equal to x plus 1. That means q would be equal to p plus 1, right? Mm. If it lies on this line. But we have been given that PQ lie above this line means PQ lies somewhere in this area, above this line, right? Mm. So this is the limiting condition. In the limiting condition, Q is equal to P plus one. And what we need to find, we need to answer whether P is greater than Q. Even in the limiting condition, when PQ is lying on this line, Q is always going to be greater than P, right? Mm. So we can definitely answer this question, is P greater than Q based on the information in seconds. So the answer should be B. Neaji clear? Yes. Okay.